Northwest Africa. Oh, yeah, they say the queen is in Northwest Africa. My naga, they saying you are in Northwest Africa. And a Maxim is only a Maxim. Love to my naga that left that comment. You know you are. They say, where's, uh, <laughs> say, ham and kush is everywhere. Someone said, well, a Maxim is shim. Meshim. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> so shim is everywhere, right? Okay, now you, now, now you see it clearly that the Preston coming out of shim, you know, coming out of Abraham, coming out of Isaac, coming out of Hakol, coming out of Yudal. Yeah, he's king of the earth, Managa. He's Khan of the world, Khan of the Indians, and India superior and beyond. The three Indians. Who is Preston John? Let's kick off Preston John and Stomach, number 92 on the headphone. Feeling so good, don't you agree? Northwest Africa is Northwest America. Is North America. Okay. Okay. I was just, you know, wondering, man, because they're saying it's an untold and sort of hush-hush history about the Moors. That's like a big secret. Truth is the Moors were and are the Aboriginal and Indigenous inhabitants of North, Central, South America, Mexico, Canada, Stop. Stop. See, when they say more, they're including us. You know what I'm saying? Right. I know you're not including Shim, right? I mean, I know you're including Shim. I know you're including Isaac. You're not just going off Ishmael, right? Got to be including Jacob, man. How cold got to be in the building. So. When you look at these maps that they have over there, you know, with Moab, you know, and so-called Middle East and all that, Moab is always right next to Judah, man. Like, it's crazy. Like, they're always just stuck to our side, man. Hawaii say they're going to be a thorn in your side, you know, but we let them rock. Joshua let you rock. You remember that, right? Hawaii Shua let you rock. Hawaii said they're going to be a thorn in your side. I mean, Moab was just always stuck to Judah, man. But now they act like we don't exist. The Aboriginal and Indigenous inhabitants. Well, look, you know, you got you can't have it both ways. Either you migrating, <laughs> either the Moroccan Catholics are coming in the third century, either you are only moving with permission from the Pharaoh, which means how are you indigenous if you are only moving with permission from the Pharaoh? You see, Moshe said, let my people go. <laughs> You're gonna have to uh, make a decision for yourself because Hawa's coming, right? Hawa's here. You only move with permission from the Pharaoh, which means you can't be indigenous. You only gonna be invading on behalf of the Pharaohs of Egypt, Atlantis, you call it this, but you can't hijack the earth plane as Atlas. You can't have Atlas hijack, Poseidon can't hijack us no more, man. We rebuke your frequency, Atlantis. And the gods, so-called, that come with you through Egypt, into Islam today, into Christianity today. Yeah, we're talking Angel Gabriel. Yeah, we're talking Thoth. This is North America. Oh, I mean, Northwest Africa. And they're the indigenous inhabitants of everywhere. Now we're talking Moab, Ishmael, and Canaan. I 
Are we talking Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh, and Naphtali? They're all considered more. It's a more and more war, I guess. It's a great on great war, I guess. We're going to dig deeper into the into more of the flow, man. Uh, the ancient Moorish empire extending at one time from Africa and Europe to Americas, anciently referred to as a Max. Atlantis. Huh? The Moors inhabited the shores of Africa and the Americas, North, South, and Central Mexico, all the adjoining islands, when lands were still connected before the great earthquake which caused the great Atlantic Ocean. Shout out to all my queens, man. Uh, you know. My aquas. My copper queen, Malaka, the sisters, the mothers, our daughters. Our protectors, holding us all the way up. Giving us that wisdom, that guidance. Our amas, that bring us life from day one. See us through, thick and thin. Yeah, they call her a Moorish woman, black Moorish woman. They don't know her name, but they say this was done around 1856. Just imagine my my Kappa soul sister <laughs> and all her splendor and all her color and all her, you know, jubilation, man. All her, you know, vitalization, you know, just vitality. Just imagine her smile, you know, her garments. Truly Appa. This is Nagaville, you know, they, they don't know who she is, right? So I'm just gonna rent for my high Amazon queens. I'm gonna say she's representing Nagaville. And this is what Nagaville look like, whether we're talking about the Moors in Spain, <coughs> or we're talking about Morocco right here in America. We're gonna go even deeper with these harmonics into their necromancy, into their necro, necronomicon, <laughs> something like that. Necromicon, <laughs> who they call the mad Arab, you know, giving them spells, right? And they need their more sciences to connect to these spells. It's like, you need both sides of things. You know, they say, oh, you got this group, you got that group, but you put it together and oh boy, do you have the wizards, right? <laughs> powerful wizards with powerful incantations, necromancy. Now, <laughs> if Morocco's over here, you know, just follow me now. Morocco's over here. My queen right here, they say is in Algeria. Morocco's over here, my queen's in Algeria, 1856. What's the meaning of Algeria? Oh. They say, they say she's in Algeria, but the meaning of Algeria is right back here. It's 
They say she's in Algiers. But the meaning of Algier is right back here, Northwest Africa, boss. Got him. Hey, say it with me, my love. Body back for the illusion. Got him. It's getting so good. It's getting so good to us. See, as we tell this story about a big brother, they got some real covetous little brothers. But that's natural, you know? You got big bro, you got little bro, you know, sometimes jealous of big bro, you know, things happen. Sometimes it's vice versa. You know, big bro was given the code, given the rules. Now, little bro's supposed to keep these rules. But Hawa continues to instill these rules, you know, in big bro. Talking about Shem and Ham and Yay Pet, right? So, sons of Noah. But we're brothers, though. Sisters, you know, brothers. So, we're family. Organic family, natural family, natural by law. But law is cold. And to be natural means to be in cold because out of cold is out of nature. A flower can't grow out of cold. You can't grow out of cold. If you eat out of cold, you don't get life. You eat in cold, you get life. You keep the cold. You get life. <laughs> you go after your own code, your own law, your own way. You duplicate, replicate everything, even Africa. Damn. So you reading this about this Algeria. Because really just talking, you know, the islands, man. <laughs> and they're saying it's queen. Say my queen is in the islands, right? My queen is in Algiers in 1856. Queen is in Algeria in 1856. Algeria, it's just the islands, man. Yeah, the islands, right? <laughs> you know, like these are the untold, or, you know, innumerable islands in the west you know what i'm saying so-called west but we're really in the east right so think about us being in the east think about this being india superior think about these islands we talked arab proper last time right <laughs> so don't let the arabic fool you now that we know there's a differentiation between arab proper and arab pretenders and ishmael are Arab pretenders. This is but the legendary form of the tradition of the Katan, that Katan. The Khan, who is Joktan, is Katan, the Kara Katan. Yeah. 
In accordance with the statement, Arab genealogists hold Qatan to be the first king of Yemen. Yemen. <laughs> Yemen is Yemen. Yemen. <laughs> and his son and successor, Yaru, the first person who spoke Arabic, was the son of Joktan. And Joktan. I mean, come on. Yeah, man. Joktan. is the son of Eber. Eber is Kaver, is Heber, Heberu. So you Heberu, that means you connect with Eber somehow, some way. To be connected with Eber, you know, Eber has two sons, Peleg and Eber, man. I mean, you know, uh, Peleg and Jokta. Kaka. A leg in the days of Peleg, the earth's divided. They were just talking about when the earth was still connected with this maximum or Atlantis flow. Then you got Joktan or Kata. Joktan has some sons. <laughs> A lot of sons. Some say 13 and some in the Arabic flow say he has 24 sons which is pretty interesting. They go to 24 tribes, 24 sons, including Sheba, including Ofer. We're going to talk a little Sheba and Shambhala and Sibola, Sibola. Connect the Sibola flow, Sibola flow with Sheba, Shambhala. You know what I mean? Daughter of the Oath, daughter of the seven, seven cities of gold. We're talking Ofer, gold. Havala, you know, all our Cuba flow, like, you know, it's Hawa. Cuba was originally, you know, spelled Hawa. Yeah, I mean, you know, Jokta. <laughs> you know, Jokta. But this, but the legendary form of the tradition that Katan was the progenitor of the Southern Arabs, right? So, these Arabs are the Arab uh, proper. While the Ishmaelite Arabs were originally of non-Arabic style. So this is the mixing they talk about. They like to say, oh, originally, you know, these were these original Arabs. They got mixed with all these other invading nations. Uh, originally, it was the children of Israel. <laughs> Or, you know, in this case, you know, direct, directly out of Shem, directly out of Eber, directly out of Eber. Talking Jokta, who popped off what they're calling this Arabic flow. Well before Israel and Ishmael and, you know, we're coming out of Shem with this one, man, straight out of Shem. <laughs> So, you know, this is pretty, you know, amazing. I mean, <laughs> you have Arab proper. Then you got the Arab pretender. They adopted Arab customs and they intermarried with our women. Ishmael married the women of the tribe of Gurhum, which is the son of Joktan or Katan, Gurhum, which I say reminds me of Gurkhan or uh, Jurchen. They say J-U-R-C-H-E-N. And the Jurchen is the Jurkin or Jurkhan, you know what I mean? Kun. You know, we're going to talk Daniel all Kun. You know, we're going to have a good time, man. This is Preston 92. It's a victory lap. Alawa. Let's go. I know my Nagas is digging the vibes and uh, we got a lot of new wave surfers and, you know, don't feel overwhelmed. Just surf the wave, enjoy the drop chatter, share the information. Hey, out to the copper thread, man. <laughs> hey, my copper thread is popping off, man. So, hey, out to all my Nagas out there. Aqua Tai, you know, uh, I got 
I got to share some of this Aqua Thai drop, man. You know, real soon, real soon, man. <laughs> Let's go, <call> man. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, look, man. They married into the tribe. The Jaktan Katan, Kara Katan flow. They took the women. Is where all these wars was popping off. Taking the women to marry the tribe to become a member. You, you, you became a member through the women, Ishmael. This is why you are the pretenders adopted. And if you're non-Arab stock, that means Arab has a different meaning <laughs> than what you've been leading us to believe. Maybe we're just talking America, man. I mean, if Algier and Morocco are both over here, you know, if Algier is always connected with Morocco, ain't it? Uh, let's see. Algier, Rocco. Come, come, come. Right. So, if Morocco's over here, <laughs> process of uh, elimination, I'm just going to say that. Uh, Algiers also over here connected around Indianapolis, around this Wabash, around this situation where they setting up, you know, treaties on Tecumseh, Tipikanu, the prophet, Ten Skata Hawa, marching and migrating Ishmael, but you're not of our stock, right? Yeah, we come from the same original family. Who they call Noah. Ishmael's popping straight out of Abraham. But Abraham didn't tell you to walk around no cube to worship the creator. Set up idols. I love my brothers. This So this is, you know, this is our... This is our cry of, of redemption to all of us, because, you know, I would like to believe that we can still tribe up against the greater evil, right? Can we all agree that there's a greater evil, or do you want to accept being the greatest evil? Because ain't no greater evil than a brother stabbing another brother in the back. There's a reason why you didn't include the Shawnee and the Creek, the Shikamawa and the treaties of Fort Wayne, giving up 30 million acres to the hijack. Then we're going to go for that. If Morocco's over here, man, then Algiers over here, man. Because they're stuck together, man. They're stuck together, man. Algeria just means the islands, man. Plural islands. Then you want to put it specifically, uh, you know, existed in the Bay of Algiers. You're speaking real generic terminology as usual. A country of Northwest Africa bordering the Mediterranean Sea. Northwest Africa. Northwest Africa. Body bag. Settled circa 2000 BC by the Berber speaking people. But we know that Barbar. Hebrew word of the day is just referring to the swan.
Barbarim, Barber. I mean, you know, we we've done this, man. We out of here, man. So, Barber, Swan. Oh, come on, man. I don't, don't want to log into y'all, man. You see it though, man. And so, their Barber connects to the Swan, right? The Swan connects back to the Swan Knights, right? So we're going to get some Atlantis flow because we're going to talk Atlantis. You know, let's, let's talk about it. You want to talk to Maxim? Let's talk about it. But right quick, we, we know we're just talking swan nights, man. You know, this ain't, this ain't new to us here, man. We've been wave surfing. This is what it means to be a wave surf. We start connecting the dots. Suffering. We're just talking the Safar and the Mesh territories of Jokta. And we're talking Arizona, man. <laughs> we're talking Judah. We're talking Swan Knights. Swan Knights are the Barber Hakatsi. That Salimah, Sylvanus, Bravo is Barbar. Yeah, so you can't be a barber if you're not connected with King David, Solomon, the barbar, you know what I'm saying? The swan knight. So in our, you know, swan Hebrew barbar, we're just referring to the swan knights of Solomon, the ships of Solomon, the swan boats shaped like a swan with the sails like the wings of a beautiful gliding white swan. This was a war happening in 700 AD. In America, they want to call it Northwest Africa, right? Come on, man. So where was there a Maxim in Morocco during the Israel on Israel war that was happening? Just like the script, Northern tribe, Southern tribe, and all this other stuff. Proof of it's happening. We're validating these scripts, man. 775 AD. We're talking to Barbar Hakazi. And they just got the Berber speaking people. The Barbar, the Swans, later formed a part of the Roman Byzantine. Are you talking Mazaka, Mosak, the founder in it? And the Ottoman Empire. Oh, we're now beginning into Arab proper or Arab pretenders. Arab invaders in the se seventh and eighth centuries introduced Islam. Whoa. <laughs> So before this 7th, 8th century mark, let's just get our timeline together. Forbidden Histories of, Amer of America by Day Daniel Lowe. Hey, hop to you, Daniel Lowe. We appreciate you, man. Appreciate you allowing us to share your drop. Great work. We're just putting it together. Swan Knight, Barber. Got it. 775 AD is 8th century, my not? Where this empire of America is going through this transition from Solomon the Builder to Nehemiah, Theodorus, all Davidic princes, all happening, all royal families, all Nagas. Israel III went south to the Toltec lands of Mexico. <laughs> His grandson is a Marik. I mean, it's all happening right here. Mexico Hoto is my kid. Idwa, you know, is like another name for the house of Israel. All right, priest of Kitsukoto, all this indigenous American tribe are about the royal families.
trained warriors. They were welcomed in the fight to preserve the freedom of northwestern Spain from the Muslims. So they were fighting against these, you know, other tribes under this Moorish banner, under this Islam banner that they just said got introduced. Arab invaders, right? We just talked about Arab proper or pretenders. Now you got Arab invaders. Arab invaders in the 7th and 8th centuries. We just talked about 8th century Kalelus. So after this Kalelus, you know, is, you know, that's just the beginning, you know, of the end of this American empire. And here comes these Arab invaders. Wait, wait, we got a depiction of it. We got a depiction of it. Oh. Ishmael's migration. Look at the dates. Did we just catch him in a thousand year time shift? Anatoly Fomenko. Remember the three major chronological time shifts, 333 years, a thousand years or 1053 years and 1778 years or 1800 years. So those are the average of the time shifts that you can start paying attention to pretty much certainly, you know what I'm saying? And if you just take that thousand off, you're back in the 700s where there's some Arab invasion happening. And we talk about an Arab invasion. We're just talking about pretenders versus proper. Now, you know, this is just something for your mind blowing to get stretched around, but when's it really taking place? Did they push this back a thousand years and now we're getting it? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> now we're getting this story popping off in the seventh and eighth centuries, but it's really happening in the 17th, 18th centuries with this introduction of Islam, 1700s. Ooh. They're trying to create antiquity, right? on the head bone of Sylvanus to Texas. Like you got all this happening during this strong Israelite presence. And then you can start matching this up with the Kumse and the prophet Ten Scott Hawa and Prophetstown and Tipicanu and this cube they're walking around. And when is it happening? 775 or 1775? Talking barbers, swans, hot katsi. Okay. Talking Algeria, man. <laughs> so something's getting introduced because remember, you got proper Arabs, right? Algeria, Morocco. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, the first. Arabic, anything is coming out of Qatar, Joktan, man. And those Arabs were not Ishmaelites, and those Arabs were not Moabites. <laughs> You're talking about the original ones before they claim this Arabian title, man. Or Arabic, because the first people speaking it was coming out of the Khans. But are they speaking the same pure Arabic today as they were then? Or are they doing more of a curse, you know, cursive version, you know, like a Yiddish type of thing? This was, or this is, but the legendary form of the tradition that Katam was the progenitor, Joktan son of Eber, Hebrew, is the progenitor of these Arabs, man. Their original, the originals were original Ebers, original Eberus, Eberus. Then comes Ishmael invading or 
intermarry. <coughs> Shalah, intermarry on it on air proper. Just put the story together. Air proper is already here in America. Popping off. Jock Todd is the Yucatan. We're already popping off in Northwest of Maxim, man, right? <laughs> already. They come migrating with permission of the Pharaoh. Spreading what? Islam, right? Spreading what? Their harmonics, their frequency. But the Ishmael Arabs were originally of non-Arabs, were not of Arab stock. You can say it like that. All right. Ishmael are not Arabs, but pretending to be Arab, adopting Arab customs, intermarrying with our women after you invade, like Genghis Khan did with Preston John's daughters, right? Intermarried them, created a lineage of royals through them. Same thing they did time and time again in the Babylonian captivity. God, we're going to talk Daniel. Right now, talking pretenders, man. I mean, this ain't no play play. So in the seventh and eighth centuries, something was introduced, right? Right after, you know, Sylvanus took Texas and then are going through their situation. <laughs> and the royals are now, they're saying, going to Europe. Members of the royal family were sent back to Europe. Right? Because Europe, you know, Spain and all that, right? <laughs> Remember, they were fighting for the freedom from this frequency that they're calling Muslims, even though let us find the truth told us a long time ago that Muslims itself, you know what I'm saying, just refers to a people of the promise and etymology. Love to let us find the truth. Just, but just like Arab, these titles are being hijacked by people that are covetous, tribes that are covetous, making a treaty against Israel. But we were fighting for freedom against this frequency that they're coming in. Rodrigo El Seed, 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 Saeed, was Tapuzin's great-grandson. Tapuzin's son was called Lane Calvo or Lancelin of Galelus or Lancelot of Camelot. King Arthur is Kandawi. Kalelus means promised land, right? Concerning the many rumors and early voyages to this land in the article, it tells of Kalelus meaning promised land. Promised land. Kalelus or Cali. <laughs> land of America. Ain't no confusion, right? They're coming in the 8th century with their Islam on the head bone of the promised land. Khan. But you don't have nothing on Kalelus that is already fully stocked with royals. So you must have been coming after the royals. Right here in North West Africa, a Maxim boss. Then claiming to be the indigenous of all the land. <laughs> then who the hell was fighting you? Because Lot wasn't happy with their lot. They wanted more. We're just talking Algeria or the islands. And again, shout out to my island queens, man. <laughs> shout out to our queens, man. 
So, you know, this, this understanding is nothing new to us, man. When they say Algier, they just talking about right here. Khan Aqua, she says, Khan, Khan. <laughs> drop that drop. <laughs> Bring it out, drop. Okay, Queen, we're going to do it for you. Shout out, <laughs> shout out to my Aquas. <laughs> like, drop going crazy. He's talking to the Aqua, man. That's right, man. <laughs> talking to the Aqua. Feeling good, man. I mean, how y'all really? All right, so like I said, we're going to get on our Buddha flow, you know, get back on our Buddha flow. Remember, Buddha and Solomon have a very similar correlation. These wise nuggets popping off. <laughs> We're just talking Sibo, La Sibo, La Sibo, La. Yeah. The cave painting, shout out to my aqua. Cave paintings of Ajanta. Or we're just talking Atlantis. We're just talking Atlantis, man. We're talking Sheba. What is the queen Sheba? Remember, you know, she's the queen of Sheba, right? So she embodies the name Sheba, but that's really a title. Her name isn't actually Sheba. She's the queen of Sheba, which reminds me of the Joktan flow. You know, Joktan has these sons, you know, one is Sheba, and then you got Ofer, so <laughs> let's just at least bring these two together, you know, then we're going to start digging in on the other ones as well, because it all is going to lead us somewhere very important, so Sheba, Ofer, coming out of Joktan, Ka, or Kata, <laughs> Ka. Queen of Sheba, right? So she's queen of this land, you know, just surfing this wave that's named after one of Joktan's sons. And also there's a Sheba, you know, coming out this uh, Kush line. So parallels, duplications, you know, phantoms, you know what I'm saying? Is it two Shebas or is it one? Joktan seems to be getting slept on, though, you know what I mean? So Queen of Sheba, connecting with this land of Ofer. <laughs> so you got the land of Ofer, and you got a land of Sheba. She's the queen of Sheba. Gotcha. And when the queen of Sheba, Sheba, heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of Hawa, she came to prove him with hard questions. So she already had the drop. She was just making sure <laughs> he was all caught up and had the drop. And again, what does Sheba have to do with Shibala, Shimbala, Shabala, or Sibola? Sibola, Sibola, Sibola. The same Sibola that means Kalelus. The same Sibola that's popping up on the maps everywhere, man. I mean, everywhere, boss. This Ruskelly 1598, let's zoom in. Everywhere, boss. Ruskelly, R-U, Ruskelly, R-U-S-C-E-L-L-I, 1598. Right there, small in the middle, is Sivola. Sometimes spelled with a C U C E U or C E V O L I O L A, or sometimes with a C I B O L A, C Bola, C Vola. And C Vola is Kalelus. And here's Quivera, sometimes with a Q or with a K, Kivera, which is Heber or Heber or Eber, you know. And Joktan is Yukata. <laughs> and Anon is Anon Ben David. Anion. 
Mexico is Mexica, man. Mexica is Moshe, right? So all these lands, you know, are named after, you know, your great ancestors. But you wouldn't know to look at a map in the 1500s to find Covera in the kingdom of Ania, which is also the name of the, you know, mythical strait or the Bering Strait that you cross to get to the other Asia or Rush. Or Tellius 1570. In the middle also has Sivola. Cavera, Ania, <laughs> kingdom, regnum means kingdom. So we were, we're reading about Kalelus. We're reading about this kingdom. I don't see Morocco on these maps, you know what I'm saying? And if this is 1570, they don't know no good to put Morocco up in here. <laughs> then maybe they did add a thousand years. And maybe they're just getting here, you know, with permission from the Pharaoh. With permission from the Pharaoh, 1785. Could be when they are really just pulling up. I mean, all these Indian wars sure are going down at the same time. You know? 1785. Treaties on treaties on treaties. They're making treaties with the hijack. We covered that. Get the drop. Now they got Barbary Wars. Well. We're talking about swans and swan knights and Solomon's ships shaped like gliding white swans on the headboat of the Kunse. The royals are already here popping up. Algier, <laughs> the islands, Northwest Africa, right? So, I mean, Managa, we just, you know, <laughs> We bounce rock roller skating right now, man. I mean, they say Sheba, right? Let's just back it. Let's just back it up a little bit. They say Sheba. Legendary mythical cities in the Kalak Chakra Mandala. Chapter seven of Forbidden Histories of America. Now it says, now I realize. What follows is not evidence, but I include it simply because I know that you can see the obvious. We have many legends and stories about mythical cities of the past. At one time before diminished to mythical status, they were legends and prior to that, a known fact. Sometime in the distant future, the existence of New York will be a myth. Hey, ain't that the truth? <laughs> The Aztec legend of Atslan. And we see Aztlan right here on the map underneath the boat. Now watch how he going to put it together, Daniel Lowe. And we are just looking at the details and getting the validation and cash and receipts, man, <laughs> at the same damn time. So, Aslan, which, which we just saw on the map, Plato's mythical Atlantis, which they're saying is here, right? <laughs> right, Northwest of Mexico, which is Atlantis. Okay, so we're just getting the drop. We're just getting the drop. The Roman Jewish Kalelus, which means America, we just got, which means the promised land, land of America. The Spanish kingdom of Cibola, 
<laughs> which we also see all over the maps. And just right quick, I mean. This really ain't no play play. Even in the 1700s, it is quite obvious they are, they were lacking in this seeming well-guarded secret of the land of Kalelus or Cibola. Bang. See how they spell it? Looks like a C-E-U, you know, or that's a V, which they get the C-I-B from Cibola, Cibola. Marcos Nisa was over here. Sept City, seven cities. Whoa, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is called Lake Kapala. And Kapala sounds a lot like that Kapilia that we were talking about in the Waspi, right? It was also a deliverer, contemporaneous with Moshe. Come on, surf the wave, man. <laughs> Cibola is Kalelus. But what else is Cibola? Right, because you see it on the maps all over the place. C-E-V-O-L-A, C-E-V-O-L-A. Sept, seven cities. Even around this Lake Apollo, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And this Lake Apollo is popping up on this granata or pomegranate, pomegranate map right here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cities. I mean, all these maps got this thing surrounded by seven cities, man. Something to the Cibola, or we're just talking Shambhala. Shim, Shim, Amek Shim, right? <laughs> Shambhala. And so on Google Earth today, like, you know, is this Lake Kapala still there? Because they tried to say it's 30 million years old or so. <laughs> it would seem the existence of this very striking strikingly similar lake which science claim existed 33 million years ago just happens to be so close in appearance to the lake which appears on the old Latin maps this is likely documented and kept from the rest of the world by the early Roman Jewish colonists okay but if you look at some of the maps done by the old Latin explorers, even in the 1700s, it is quite obvious they were lacking in this seeming well-guarded secret land of Kalelus or Cibola. Here's some examples of these map, Latin maps. So this was a well-guarded secret, they say. Let's go back. I mean, you know, this is, very, <laughs> this is interesting, man, right? Because they're... Still finding it on this Google Earth, 5,600 foot elevation. Popping up on the Granada map, Palma Granata. Is it still there, man? I mean, well, you know, I don't want to give out too much. We're, we're going to have to take this investigation <laughs> primarily to 432thedrop.com. Hey, how to my Nagas surfing the wave on the website in the chatterbox, enjoying the flow. Was it in fact one of many artifacts brought from Kalelus or America or Kalelus or Cibola, Shimbala? Because Cibola, the kingdom of Cibola, just like the kingdom of Ania and Kavera, the kingdom of Eber, and the seven cities around Lake Kapala that we just counted up, counted up, counted up. Mm. The Tibetan Hindu mystical seven cities of Shambhala, huh? Shambhala, huh? Or Shiba. 
So when you're over here staring at this Cibola in the middle of these maps, it's just Sheba. And don't we know, don't we know that Joktan Joktan has a son named Sheba. Katan has a Cibola. Cibola is the son of Joktan, which is why he's on the map. Just like Yucatan. <laughs> they get land. It's named after their, you know, children. So it stays in the bloodline and the lineage. And we can, you know, put the sephir together, connect the puzzle pieces. Sheba is identified as the ancient South Arabian kingdom of Sabah, Managa. South Arabian, we're talking Arab proper, we're talking India superior, and the kingdom of Saba is the kingdom of Sibola. Wow. And the kingdom of Sibola is the kingdom of Saba or Sheba or Shimbala, which they call Shambala. We just call Sibola, is Sheba or Saba, kingdom of Saba, Sibola, kingdom Manak. Right on your maps, right? <laughs> you see that uh, castle? That's not because it's a house. <laughs> These are kingdoms. So the author, Daniel Lowe, is saying all this could be the same thing. Aslan, right, which we see. Uh, which map is it? Oh, right here, Aslan, right under the Cibola. Okay. Aslan. Atlantis. Cibola. Around Lake Kapala. Shambhala or Shambhala or Sheba. Khan. The Welsh Anwa or Ania. And King Arthur's Kamala, which is Kalelus. All this is the same in the land of Avalon and many others, such as King Solomon's Mines in the land of Ophir. And Moses' promised land were, where, and he sends scouts who bring back the pomegranate. Pomegranate is Roman. Roman comes from Rimon, which means pomegranate in Hebrew, because Joshua and Caleb had to get the pomegranate to prove that they were in Granata, pomegranate, promised land, Cibola, 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 Aslan, Ophir, promised land, Kalelus. Why pomegranate? We'll come back to that. <laughs> All right. He keeps bringing up these seven peaks, seven caves business, which is interesting. Is it possible that this place described above could all be one in the same place? Could Atlantis be a Maxim, which is Aslan, Kalelus, which is Cibola, which is, you know, where Lake Kapala is? or Kapilia, Shambhala, Sheba, Shim, Shimbala, you know what I mean? So we're just talking promised land, my naga, no matter what language, no matter what mythical story is coming out of. We're talking the case of a jaunt. Yeah. 
Now, the scholars in Hebrew would have us believe that the word Sheba is a foreign derivation. They want us to believe it's coming out of Ham, right? Not Shem, not Jokta, right? Cush, right? Foreign derivation, providing no definitive translation. And yet they tell us that it is the name of early progenitors of tribes and of an Ethiopian district. Well, we know Ethiopian comes from the Greek word eptiops, eptiops, which means what? Burnt, burnt face, dark skin. <laughs> so we're, we're in Ethiopia in America, the Orient, right? There in Ethiopia, wherever there's burnt faces, right? <laughs> we're pray tell that they come up with this. I could answer, but I think I will hold my thought. Bathsheba. Beth Shebo, mother of Solomon, meaning daughter of the oath. What oath? Covenant. What covenant? Shane, down with your covenant, your treaties. Coming out of, you know, Ham and Cush. She's a daughter of the oath. She's the coal keeper. Coming out of Shem. Not that Ethiopia, this Ethiopia, the east, the farthest east. She's the daughter of the seven. Seven cities of gold. Sheba, Shebo, son of Ramah, oath, covenant, or seven. They keep saying Septimania on all those maps, right? But Sept means seven. We're talking a kingdom that has a covenant. So when she went up to test Solomon, she's coming right out the oath. She wants to make sure he's a cold keeper. She wants to make sure he knows, he sees clearly. The queen of Sheba, Shebo, oath, covenant, or seven is not of so-called Ethiopian origins or Hamitic origins, and in all likelihood was not even from the continent in which Israel is found. Oh, what continent is Israel found today? Oh, it's connected with Africa, right? So we're talking those Ethiopians, not this Israel and not this Ethiopia. <laughs> He's not saying Israel is in America, we're connecting all this to know where Israel is actually found, where Jerusalem, Jerusalem, where Udall. If so, she was from a, from India, but I suspect she was of a distant land with ties to India, or was she from India Superior, and likely a descendant of Shem. Right, so we gotta we gotta take our queens back, right? <laughs> we gotta take our queens back because they want us to think when they talk Ethiopia, Africa, that they're talking Africa, <laughs> but we're talking Africa, <laughs> Northwest Africa. To them, you know, to them, because they, you know, they tripping, but they just talking about the islands. Don't trip. They're just talking about the islands. And if we got to talk Algier and Arabia, we got to talk proper, not pretender. Proper. It's very important. Allah, wow. Got to give it up to the Aquas, so. We're just talking to high Amazon Queen. Love to Aaron Ben Gilad Gilad. Dot blogspot dot com. The Catalan map, Catalan map, fourteen eighty, obviously drawing on an earlier map from before nine ninety A.D. is correct, and that the area of Saint Lawrence Canal is the area of the western Brazil Islands. 
We're going to connect all this with Brazil. In the area near Rock Hall, right? They're going off of Eastern Barzell, Western Barzell, you know? Wow. Okay. We're talking about things connecting. Isle of Demons. Whoa. We were just talking about the Island of Dragons. You know, they, they like to call our dragons demons, but let's keep reading. St. Brendan's Island of High Brazil was so called as it is, as it was the last stopping place before the open seas and the Western Brazil Islands. The mysterious Island of Demons and the Isles of De Moncieli may have been the other two sunken islands that made up the Brazil islands. In Gaelic legends, these islands were called the islands of women or the islands of maidens or the isles of ladies. We're just talking about the high Amazon queens popping off. These islands may have been under the rule of the high Amazon queen. We're talking Khalifa. We're talking Sheba. Daughters of the Oath. Their last remnant seems to have sunken under the sea in 1530. Of course, it is possible that a small part, a small part of one of the dual islands may have remained above the sea until the 17th or 18th centuries before it also sunk. Damn, I mean. Did Atlantis sink a lot? <laughs> Did Atlantis sink a lot more recent than we think? Was the earth divided and this Joktan flow, Peleg flow popping off way more recent than we think? We got recent ice ages and recent land sinking and a whole lot going around this Tecumseh war the Tecumseh Common or the Dragon that caused a whole lot of shaking up, earthquakes, everything, right? So a lot happening in the 1800s, my not that's all I'm saying. Uh, Ishmael's migrating, <laughs> right? A lot's happening, man. They got ice ages and, and, and harmonic mountains, man, Morocco. All hijacks are popping off right now, is all I'm saying, man. So we're just trying to see clearly. I mean, don't mind us. Islands may have remained above the sea until the 17th or 18th centuries before it also sunk. The ruler of these islands were known as the lady of the sea or the fairy queen of the sea and her consort as omir omir o-r-m-r -R, meaning dragon uh-oh <laughs> so her consort had a name meaning dragon or sea serpent okay uh Am I making anything out of my life? You know what I mean? They brought up dragon, not me. Connected with the high Amazon queen. <laughs> right. Okay. Told you it was getting good to us, man. You got all these links. Dig on it. I'm just belly flopping because, you know, we got some beautiful things to cover, man. This also important as it was, this also important as it was also part of the route that the Roda Knights are, right? The kingdom of Roda, where they're getting Rodrigo, Rodriguez. Also meaning red. Used to travel to their mining colonies in Kaleu, so. 
if there's mining colonies popping off of Kalelu's, just imagine how much was being mined from the promised land or Kalelu's. Thus, the seven islands of Brazil may have included Lachlan, Avalon, Brazil, Newfoundland, Cape Britain, Breton Island, huh? <laughs> and two other possible sunken islands on the route to Kalelu's. Look how they pulled up on Kalelu's, man. They just, you know, took this Atlantis sea route, according to this description. Basically just cut all the way through, man. <laughs> like there's a riverway. They were able to cut all the way through to Arizona. <laughs> to you though and who's this dragon popping off with the high amazon quick we're just talking to Preston because last time that I checked Preston met meteor right <laughs> Preston means meteor meteor is a dragon well, let's keep going man Oh, yeah. We're just talking Atlantis. Yeah, I got a lot of drop here. We're connecting, man, and it's coming along. So, you know, they're talking about the early Kalelu's kings, talking about Solomon II that we just... Talked about in Forbidden Histories of America, Shalom, Salim, Sylvanus of the Kasi, Kati, Hati, Aiti, British King in Babylonian Exilarch, Nasi of Mar, Mari, ruler of Sumer. We're talking Samaria, man. Could it be? In Britain, I remember the Kunsay's tribing up with some of these British allies, they're saying, right? But these Britons were already in the fold of the Exilarchs. This is why he was going straight, you know, to his con action to help fight against the hijacks that's making treaties because the Britons were already tribed up with Judah. Red mine, pomegranate, red mine, lords of the mines, which means you had all the, all the gems, all the drop. He married Tamar, the 21st, 18th Damnu of the stone. Whoa. We're going to, remember, remember that Shintamani stone? We're going to talk a little Shintamani, man. You, I got all these links. So let's go. And queen of the Domni, Domnami. The daughter of Nathan II, Ukba, Ukba, Babylonian XLR. Yeah, I mean, what's the stone about, man? You know, Dom knew of the stone. So we remember tomorrow. Which tomorrow is this? Uh, well, this is tomorrow the 21st, man. So tomorrow is an ancient title. Shout out to the Queens, man. Queen tomorrow. We've been digging on that. And these queens are linked up with the Exilarchs. His father, after defeating the Almec enemies of the Roman Romani Kala or Kalelusians, <laughs> restored Romani pomegranate. These are promised land nagas, not the Roman that you're thinking. This is 45 BC. Right, so the Rima, their control was restored and appointed his son Matthias, Matthias, as the new Rima Khan. He took the name Tolmai as the name used by the previous rulers of Kalelus and Rhoda. And you keep reading and you know, you got more of this Judah, Ramani, Kalelus, you know, 
con story popping off from the BCs to the ADs. Sylvanus Tolteca, king of Kalelus. Now they got him in 50 to 120. The Sylvanus Toltecs, as we were just digging on. And Forbidden Histories of America, we popped off at 775, 700. So, again, you know, either ancient titles or we're just, you know, jumping around in the timeline with more time shifts. You know what I mean? Either way. Now, he's married to Lady Davida. Remember the David title goes both ways, you know what I mean, in terms of it's being rocked by the queens and the kings. The queens are Davidas. The kings are... David's right. These are titles of your royals that go way back, man. <laughs> How far back? I mean, before the, where the story's just picking up and the King David, we know, you know what I mean? This David title was around even before that day. The Solomon title was already, these are titles, Solomon. Even David, his title was also Solomon. Like, these are just titles. Lady Davida, daughter of Gilead ben Joseph, Fisher King of Avalon. Manaka, this is in America, man. Nisia, Nisia, Nair, but Nathaniel, the daughter of Nathaniel Bar Ptolemy or Toltex. All these are the Toltex. That's why the Jews can't claim this. This is Hebrew stuff, the same Jewish stuff. This is Ramani stuff. It can't be Roman. <laughs> All of what they popped off with later didn't even happen yet. <laughs> You're in the BCs, man. Christianity ain't even happening yet for all these Roman Caesars and Catholic this and this and that and that. That story ain't even, that reflection ain't even been drawn up yet. This is before BCs, my nigga. <laughs> 52 BC, 92 BC, you had Lady Davida. Wasn't no JC walking on the earth, man, according to the timeline, right? So this is your ancient drop. But now you, you know, bring it right here at home to America, you know, what they call the Maxim, right? Daughter of Nathaniel Bar Toteca, a.k.a. St. Bartholomew. And Princess Salome of Kalelus. Shout out to my queens, my princesses, my aquas. Lady Davida was the first Judeo Reman Amazon queen of Kadodu, known as Dodi or Doda the first. So this Dodi's title is coming out of Kadodu. And we were just digging on the Kadoan Mississippians. Say it with me. Body bag. Because they're telling you that they're in Kalelus, right? They're telling you that they're in America, huh? You know, joke time, Yucatan, we're talking the proper, the proper Arab stock. I mean, that's unbelievable. We're talking Shambhala. We're talking the Oath Keepers, man. I mean, they, they told us real clearly what's really happened. These artifacts, these swords coming out with dragons on them, these towels, this technology they're, com they're finding coming out of Arizona. That has this Britain, Albion, Jacob on him, Roman or Rima, Actum Theodore, like Theodorus, Gaul, Sin, Sinai, Israel. They got these inscriptions on them, councils of great cities together with 700 soldiers. AD 800, January 1st, we were born over the sea to Kalelus. An unknown land where Toltex and Sylvanus ruled far and wide over a people. Theodore transferred his troops to the foot of the city, Rhoda, and more than 700 were captured. No gold is taken away. Theodore 
a man of great courage, rules for 14 years. Jacob rules for six. With the help of God, nothing has to be feared in the name of Israel. 800 AD, inscriptions on these leg crosses, these towels in Arizona. Tucson, Arizona, 32 lead objects. That's all they're telling us about <laughs> in Kalelu's. Kalei loose, which means what? Promised land. America. Promised land. Cibola, Cibola, Cibola. Kadodo, title Dodi, Doda of Lady Davida. <laughs> Kadodo. Kadoian Mississippians are thought to be descendants of woodland period groups. What? In the classification of archaeological cultures of North America, the woodland period of North America pre Columbian culture spanned a period from roughly 1000 BC to European contact. Dang. <laughs> so they were here from at least 1000 BC up until the time the hijack invaded and migrated and put the war and treaties on the head ball. That's Kado, Kado. The Forch Malin culture, the Mossy Grove culture, peoples who were living in the area around 200 BC to 800 CE. BC, they were linked to other people across much of the Eastern woodlands through expansive trade networks. We're talking spice roads. Yeah. They had earthworks like mounds, right? You're talking mound builders, God. Yeah. Mounds all over the place, trade popping off all over the place. Very advanced civilization. I'm talking Arkansas, I'm talking Caddo Parish, Caddo, right? Caddo, Caddo Parish, Louisiana. Yeah, Arkansas is popping off. Cherokee County, Texas. Caddoian mounds everywhere. Louisiana, River, Red River. What? Like the Red Sea? <laughs> Uh-oh. When the Spanish conquistador, listen to this, man. Hernando de Soto led an expedition into the southeastern region of North America, 1540. His party encountered Native American groups regarded as Nagas. <laughs> Naguateks. <laughs> Naga text, damn. <laughs> text like Toll Texas, right? Shout out to the Nagas and Toll Texas and Nagua text. Nishoni, like the Shani, okay. Hakanak. Kan, hey, how to the Hakan. Nandakal. These names were now believed to have referred to Kado villages. Kado, Kado, do. People comprised the Kado nations of Oklahoma, right? Because they pushed a lot of us into Oklahoma, right? A federally recognized tribe. So, you know, now they got their federal recognition. So we must not be talking about, you know, the OG Kado, Kado, do. They speak Kado language. critically endangered language with no exclusively Kado speaking community and only 25 speakers as of 1997. Nobody speak Kado no more. 
Wow. God, old people were forced to a, res to a reservation in Texas, 15, excuse me, 1859. They were removed to Indian territory. You know, I'm just breezing through, but you see how it all connects. Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, to Texas. And we still just talking. Cardodo. Cardonavis. Cardo. Think it's play play. These Judah kings are already here before Morocco. They didn't need permission from the Pharaoh. That's the difference between you and us. See, Shem, you're talking big boy. You're talking big bro. Ham and Kush, Ham and Kush, that's little bro to big bro Shem. We're just talking ancestors. Moab claiming Abraham, but Lot ain't the seed of Abraham. Don't you get it? So this Baruch you want to claim from Abraham? It's for his seed. He covered Lot in protection. But Lot wasn't happy with their Lot. In Moab, Amon, you know how you popped off out of Lot, right? So this is where the jealousy is coming from. This is where the hate is coming from. And my, my Nagas and Nagaville, children of Israel, their hate ain't never going to be quenched. A few of them going to choose up, but this hate has been festering in the foundations of this nation, of this, you know, um, of this promised land. Everybody wanted. It's the most coveted land on earth, man. They still haven't touched the true jewels and gems of our land. They still can't find Montezuma's treasure. We come out of Abraham through Isaac, right? They don't come out of Abraham. You know, Lot is the nephew of Abraham. Two different seeds, two different frequencies. We come out of Isaac. Through Jacob, they don't come out of Isaac. They come out of Ishmael. And although Ishmael had the drop because he's coming out of Abraham, Ishmael had the drop, but his children decided to go their own way, make treaties and make covenants with these fallen energies. Now they're on their bays and elves. Now they're doing necromancy with the Moorish sciences. We're going to talk about the mad air, the mad air and the necronomicon. <laughs> We're going to talk about it, man. We're just surfing the wave. It's a victory lap for us. We're putting this all together. If you want to try up with us, you're going to have to encourage us and help us and nourish us to be a tribe again, or else you don't have nobody to try up with. And if we ain't no tribe, ain't no way you're going to survive. Because if you ain't figured this out yet, there's an order to this flow. And without the children of so-called Israel, without this seed coming out of Isaac, coming out of Jacob, how cold, hijack, you don't get no earth, you don't get no promised land, you get destruction. What have these treaties brought us? Look around, it brought us nothing. It's done nothing for the Naga in the hood, nothing for the Naga in the ghetto. It's done nothing for the Naga in the project. We became the tail and not the head because of these treaties and these invasions. So we can speak about it with the emotion because we've died about this stuff, man. We've suffered. We've been in hell over these damn treaties, man. But my Nagas, we can't hate them because we did it to ourselves. We take that responsibility now you take yours, man.
when we choose up, we expect you to do the same thing. When we choose down, we expect you to do the same thing. You follow us. You're always following us, right? So you don't admit it, but you know you're following the Rex and the Goose. You know you want to be con. And until you stop coveting the title that was never yours. Well, Atlantis will continue to be the strong. You just start from the way. I say that out of love because I want to try but with my brothers, my sisters. Right now, we don't have to pay for what our ancestors have done out of code, in code, but we can do it the right way. You can do the right thing. We can be in order. We can choose up together. But there is an order, and you're going to respect it. God, oh. So, yeah, we got this last time, Queens of Kado, though. So, you got the drop. I mean, we're just talking the do do, the Kado do, who's queen and her elite Judah women ruled over different tribes in the areas of Arkansas. Manaka, this is order. They're the elite Judah Israelite queens and even in israel there's order the scepter never departs from judah from dawi they got an issue with that any other tribes then you already know what it is you got an issue with hawa who gives order to all natural by law energy frequency vibration you're not out of order by nature you're in order by nature. Our tribes have an order. We popping off in order in real time. Order over chaos. Elite. High. Order. These Judeo Romani Amazon. Elite. <laughs> Con of cons, because you're the head and you're not the tail. There ain't no mistaking that you are elite. As well as some of the pagan American Indians. So there's a difference between Arab proper <laughs> and pretending Arabs, right? There's an elite Cherokee. And then there's the pagan uh, American Indians. Because when you talk Cherokee, you're talking the Kara, Ka, Kara, Katai, Katan, Jakta, you know, proper. So the Cherokee people today descend from this Judeo Roman Amazon elite royal <laughs> ruling group, as well as some of the pagan Indian. They're pagan because they're going after other powers. Calling them out by name, Ishmaelites. While other groups such as Kado, Choctaw, and Chickasaw were under the queen's rule and authority. So again, this author's not calling the Kado pagan or the Choctaw pagan or the Chickasaw pagan. The Ishmaelites, sure. <laughs> but these other groups were simply under the rule of, you know, this particular queen who is over the tribes of Arkansas, Mississippi, the Cadoans. <laughs> and we just got that. We're just talking the Mississippi. Kadoan Mississippi culture, man. I can't make this up. This is what exists. We're putting it together. Kadoan Mississippi culture. 
Managa, it's existing, right? Gulf of Mexico, Meshi, Meshi, Meshi. Mississippi. Cado, Mississippi, Cado, Mississippi culture. What does Mississippi got to do with the now? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. So they were under the queen's rule and authority, and the queen was known as Davida or David. Dode, Doda, because we're talking Kado. Queen over the Kado, Choctaw, and a chicken saw, and often in the second to fifth century, intermarried with the kings of Calais. So the queen had to have her king, her king. And they were co-monarchs. They ruled together. But not a framer and shaper. We're talking Sheba Solomon, right? Talking Sheba, Shimbala, Sibola, Kalelu. Okay. So, you know, keep the Cado in mind, the Cadoian Mississippi culture. Interesting connection with this article on the same blog spot. It's digging on some of the lineage. You got Art Og, Marcus Aurelius Claudius Gothius, King of Dumbarton, 245. AKA Claudius II, Gothis, Emperor of Rome, right? What's it got to do with Mark, Marcus Aurelius Tiberius, man? <laughs> he married Princess Britta Sylvania of Calalus, the daughter of Sylvanus Britannicus, Britta, right? Solomon the Britta, the Judah, Rima, Khan of Calalus. This is in the third century. Third century. It's from his wife Britta. His wife was named Britta. <laughs> that Dumberton, Dumberton may have gotten its name, its name, or the fortress Dun of Britta. It was previously known as Alt Clauda, Cloud, Clauda, or the rock in the cloud. Clyde River. So they turn it into Clyde, but however you say it, Cloud. The Irish mentioned Queen Britta and Brienne Brit and Brienne of Britain, the Britain, who led the Strathclyde army at the Battle of Much Rama. <laughs> Husband King Art Og, man. I mean, what's this got to do with the Og of the script, man? It, it ain't, ain't Moshe going at Og. I don't know, but Og we know is also a title connected with the old God. We got that. Connected with the old gear. Ogam, Sylvanus Ogam could be King David because out of, out of David comes this uh, Salimah, the builder. But the founder of Kalelus is saying is Sylvanus Bravo. And we got last time that he ends up going at this giant, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and uh, takes out a giant, basically, you know what I'm saying? So... Sylvanus Bravo is being credited with taking down a giant. I believe the giant was out of Og, Og or Agam, but Agam is a title. Og, let's go. The Clyde River was also the Clyde or the 
Kalelu's riff. Whoa. They showed us before how they were taking these riverways, these riverways into Kalelu's. And here comes a cataclysm. It was part of the route to Kalelu's. Kelso was also named due to his being part of the route. In the past, the Tweed and the Clyde Rivers were one river that boats could be sailed from Doomberton to Kelso, Kalkau, and the coast. And then the ships would sail south to Calais or Kalelu's. Around 990, the cataclysmic changes of that time caused a separation between the Cloud or the Kalelus River and the Tweed River, which means twin. <laughs> so you have a twin Kalelus River now. The nursery rhyme Tweedle Dumb and Tweedle D. Dang, so you singing these nerd. Uh, nursery rhymes, and they're referring to cataclysms and Kalelus and the Kalelus River being called Tweedledum after Dumberton and Tweedledee. Tweed. Wow. Alludes to this event, and the rhyme even speaks of the Kalelus raven or crow ships and their black color and the rhyme suggesting that the separation of the river may have been caused due to conflict between Dumberton and Kelso. Tweedledum, Tweedledee agreed to have a battle for Tweedledum said to Tweedledee had spoiled his nice new rattle. <laughs> Just then flew down a monstrous crow as black as a tar barrel which frightened both the heroes, so they quite forgot their quarrel. <laughs> oh, man. He was then given the additional name of Gothius, which was remembered in the British genealogies as Augus or Aug. Mm, legends portray him as a huge, strong man like an ogre. Come on. Given to feats of bravado and strength. And then his brother is Marcos Aurelius Claudius Quintilius, Quintilius, succeeding him as emperor. So this is Og. Was this Og the giant? Are we getting some drive that Og is art? And you're talking about Marcus Aurelius Claudius Scotius, king of doom. Doombert. All right. All right. All right. We have a, a good time surfing away, man. You know, getting it straight up like this, straight up like that. Just digging on this river again. They said it's called the Clyde River. Okay, okay. Silver, silver, oh man. They're connecting the silver with the Sylvanus. Whoa. The mining industry, the merchant ships of Solomon are mentioned in the Arthurian tales and the grail romances. This Solomon is confused with the original King Solomon or is it? the original <laughs> King Solomon. Nacian is Nathan. Wow, okay. I mean, you see how, you know, how fun it is to connect things when you know what you're looking for, man. 
Mr. Wada Day Danai be popping up all over the place around the ancient Hebrew store. It was previously known as the Kalad, <laughs> the Kalad River. Before they said the Kalad River is the Kalalus River, right? The Kalad River is interesting, man, you know. <laughs> and when you look it up, you know, it for some reason connects to this, this twist on the story that they did later with the Nordic folklore into this church grim business and it's hella funny because the church grim is a guardian spirit <laughs> all right so what they would do when they set up their graveyards is they would bury somebody alive and that's the guardian spirit that would protect the graveyard but you know they started actually doing it with a big black dog <laughs> Uh, the black dog is a supernatural spectral. I told you, man. Always go back to them dog heads, man. <laughs> the black dog, right? Or we're talking Anubis, right? We're talking with permission of the Pharaoh. <laughs> the black dog is a supernatural spectral or demonic entity originating from English folklore that has been always been seen throughout Europe and the Americas. It is usually unnaturally large with glowing red and yellow eyes. It's often connected with the devil. So the English church grim usually takes the form of a large black dog and guards churchyards from those who would profane them, uh, including thieves, vandals, witches, warlocks, devil himself. Okay. Yeah, man. So they would have a dog uh, decide if someone's going to heaven and hell <laughs> during funerals. The clergyman may see the grim or the dog looking out from the church tower and determine from its aspect whether the soul is deceased of the, de of the deceased is destined for heaven or hell. Don't that sound like Anubis, man? Don't that sound like Anubis, man? Yeah, man. It's funny because they say see also Anubis, man. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Got him. So they done flipped all this, man, with permission of the Pharaoh. Yeah, you know I mean. And they got this connection with Scotland and this same, you know, River Claw, Claw, <laughs> or Kalalu's River. The most remarkable feature of this stretch of hillside is that within just a few miles, the River Tweed, the Claw, and the Anna rise and begin their journeys to different corners of Scotland. Scotland, my nug. <laughs> Maybe. Hey, this is a great map. Love to Hawaiian Empire, Island Black Girls. What, what they do? You know, you see. Scotland right at the top of Texas. If you know, I know it's small, but blow it up, you'll see. You see Paris, Texas, to the left of that is Scotland. To the left of that is Sudan, man. I mean, put it together. Trinidad up top, Cuba right there, and New Mexico. <laughs> I mean, I can't make this stuff up. Moab is where Moab is, right? Morocco is where Morocco is, right? You got uh, we got Morocco. We got Mecca. There you go, Mecca over here. So you got Mecca, Morocco. All this, all that is where we've been seeing it elsewhere, right? So why wouldn't all this also be hashtag facts? And what's Mexico doing way up here? Mexico, Atlantis letting you know that that's where it connects, right? So, but yeah, Scotland's right here in North Texas. Interesting. <laughs> Could be just talking Scotland, right? Scotland. Connecting with the River Claw and Ania, the Anna. <laughs> 
all that we know, we're just talking. We're just talking. Say it with me, man. Ania, Ana. So this Kalelus or Cibola <laughs> River has a connection with Ania. Con. I mean, that's all they really say. That's all we're really getting out of it. <laughs> the Cloud River. They also got a Cloud River. In Nova Scotia, Ontario, Nanavut, Nanavut, all Canada, Baffin Islands, all right, Canada, all right, Alberta. So there's a whole lot of Claude in Canada. <laughs> well, I guess that's because I'm looking at Canada. Okay. <laughs> Australia got the Claude Drive, New Zealand, Scotland, all right. We're Scotland, all right. Then you got a Claude in it. New York, which is a tributary of the Seneca, man. And you already know what's going down with this Seneca River. You know what's underneath the Seneca River. We're back to the damn dams. Naga City's under waves. Naga City's underwater because of these damn dams. All right, New North America, you got Vermont, man. You know what I mean? So, again, back to Canada. So, this Claude River. It's really interesting, man. Really interesting stuff right here, man. You know, just keep all these riverways in mind as we surf the wave because it really is all happening. Yeah, man, I mean, we were talking joke time, <laughs> Arab, proper, and pretenders. And what's really over here first, you know? Um, it's going back up. We're still talking to rivers. The district indicated is in Arabia, but Targum Pseudo Jonathan identifies Sephar with Sepharim or Sepharim. Josephus asserts that their dwelling place was from Kofi. An Indian river and in part of Asia adjoining it. We know where Asia is, man. But where's Kofin? So Kofin has something to do with these boundaries. We're talking about Jokta, the place of the settlement of Jokta or Yucatan. Given as from Mesha or Mesha, Mexica, Mexico, as thou goest into Safar, a mountain in the east. And again, the district indicated in is in Arabia, but we're talking Arab proper, right? Because they're talking Arab proper. Asserts that their dwelling was from Kofa. We're talking Eber Manani. We're talking Yucatan, Jokta, from Kofa, an Indian river. And in part of Asia adjoining it. Hmm. Aqua tie battle, you know, been dropping that drive for the Nagas in real time. I mean, she got the drop, she got the drop, she got the drop. You know, what's with this uh, Blue River here, man? The Blue River in Oklahoma, 141 miles long. Tributary of the Red River. <laughs> the, the Blue River is a tributary of the Red River in southern Oklahoma. Got it, got it. Aquata. You a genius, Aquata. Just watch, watch how Aquata does this, man. Part of the watershed of the Mississippi River, right? Cado, Cado, got it, got it. Blue Creek, Blue River. Got his new name in 1977. Okay, okay. Let's go here. Copenhagen was first formerly known as Munger's Mill. Copenhagen. We just said uh, Jogta, uh was from uh, Kofin, 
Copen, Kofa, and Indian River and in part of Asia joining it. We're just talking Joktar, you know, settlement from Meshe to Sephar. Sephar asserts their dwelling is from Kofi. Kofi, let's go, let's go. Is this where they're getting coffin from, man? Because, you know, <laughs> so many Nagas, so many Indians died if they started just naming them coffins, copins. Alexander the Great has something to do with copin. These Indian rivers. We, I mean, we, you know, we talked Alexander before, but I'm just talking about the copin. The Kofin campaign. Talking Jock Tom Kofin. Kofin. Aqua Tai is a genius. <laughs> Alexander personally took command of the shield bearing guards, foot soldiers, archers, Agrinians, horse javelin men, and led them against the clans. So this whole battle's popping off around Alexander and the Kofin. I'm going quickly, but we'll definitely dig deeper with this Kofin, man. We're just talking jock time, man. <laughs> Copenhagen is a town of Denmark and is northwest of Lowville. Sound like Louisville. <laughs> well, let's go. Copen, man. You know Copen. Oh, Copen Blue. Whoa, we just talked the Blue River, Aquata, right? Definition of Copen, a variable color. Averaging a moderate blue. Moderate blue, like Blue River, that is redder, lighter, and stronger than Pompadour, Bluebird, Azurite blue, Dresden blue, greater, all right? Lighter and stronger than Luster blue. And redder and lighter. That's, that's crazy because it says that the tributary is a red river, Copen blue, right? Like we just got before this Blue River in Oklahoma, tributary of the Red River in the United States, Mississippi. Which is probably why it's a little redder <laughs> when we talk coping. Yeah, man, because we're just talking about Red River as a tributary, man. Surfing the way, coping. <laughs> Oh, man, Munger's Mill. Okay, okay, Wisconsin River. Aquata is bringing us all the way in. You know, this is just some beautiful flows from the Copper Thread. Shout out to the cons of the Copper Thread. Copen. Also called Copen Blue. Copen Blue. So while they keep bringing us to Copen, Copen, Copen somewhere, Denmark, Copen, Copen, Munger's Mill, Copen, Copen, everywhere else, my naga, we know we got our red, our blue river and our red river popping off at least right here. When we talk in uh, Oklahoma, you know, connected to all this flow. I mean, for real, for real, we just talking Copen, <laughs> Copen. So you got the Alexander flow. You got the Blue River, Oklahoma flow. You got Nagas being, you know, in all these spots, man, all connected with the Khan and the Katan and the, you know, uh, Indian Wars, you know, all this stuff. You got the Kofin cap campaign that we'll get more into. You know what I'm saying? With Alexander the Great in Kabul. Remember Kabul? <laughs> Afghanistan and all this stuff, man. But this Kabul also connected with the Afghan and Jeremiah flow. I mean, you know, Kabul, you know what I'm saying? All this was happening. Cuba, right? <laughs> Cuba Valley, man, between May 327 BC, they say it was conducted against the Aspaso, Aspasioi, A S P A S I O O I. Gurians, Asakinoi tribes in the Kunar Valley, 
of Afghanistan. So we got all this before with the Kavera flow. You know what I'm saying? The Kyber flow. Because the Kyber is the copper, is the Kiber, is the Hebrew, right? The Kyber pass is the copper, my not? Right. Is the key key via key vera. Is the key vera. I mean, there's books about it <laughs> from the Kyber Pass, the Grand Quivera, New Mexico, Baba Quivera, when India ruled the world. We got this before. Kyber is here, my naga. Kyber is here. Kyber Pass. <laughs> Ancient Afghanistan was in Missouri. We're talking Kiver. Yeah, man. <laughs> you're talking Kavera. You're talking Kyber, which means you're talking Eber, man. If you're talking Eber, you're talking the father of Jokta, <laughs> whose settlement is connected with this Kofa or this Blue River drop, this Oklahoma drop, Alexander the Great drop, Managa, Cabal, Kyber. And we're just still talking Kyber. In real time. I'm just pulling up these links for you, man. You know, you go ahead and dig on it, man. Yeah. Kaibari or the Kaibari, people of Kaibar, Kubera, Kuba, the Hindu god of wealth and region of the north. <laughs> that is, in simple language, the Kaibar. And re its region is wealthy, abounding rubies, gold, cities of gold found in the rivers in its vicinity. And it was likewise the ruling northern power of those days. Yet, there is yet another important view in which the Kaiberi are to be considered. They are the Kiber. <laughs> See how they just throw K's on this stuff? Horace Butler told us one letter rule. Take the K off the Kiber and it's just Hebrew. It's the Hebrews when they're talking Kyber, man. Because the Kyber is where they derive the word copper. They are the Kibaru, Hebrews, the tribe of Judah, which they call Yadu Yadava. The Afghans, sons of Jeremiah. Jeremiah, who served in the court of King Solomon. I mean, you seen clearly yet? I just belly flopped in this link, man. Copper is Kyber, is Eber, is Kavera on these maps. Kavera with a Q. It's same as with a K H Kiveria, Kiber, Eber, Kyber, Kyber Pass, Anion. Let's go for the dismount, man. You know, I have so much more. You know, I'm gonna go way more into uh, Anion next time as well, man. You know, I'm, I'm just popping off. As soon as you hear my little ones popping off, that means you know <laughs> it's time to make some flat jacks. You know, what I'm saying <laughs> we've done what we can. And we'll come back, come back in high for Preston 93, man. But uh yeah, we're talking Yucatan, man, which means we're talking jock time. Kibera is Kuvera with a Q is Kyber with this is where they're getting cyber, cyber, uh, Cuba, Kubera, Kuvera with a Q, Kuvera with a Q. What it do? Yeah, it's a pretty good link right here. I'm digging it, man. I'm digging it. <laughs> oh, man. I got, you know what I mean? It's just so much to dig on when you're searching for the Preston. Hosea 3 and 5. Keyberry is Heber. 
And the son of Heber is Katan. Manan. But we're just talking the Arab proper. Cibola, Cibola, Cibola. Yeah, we can't talk Cibola without talking Shambhala. <laughs> Reactivating the ancient power grid, everything that has been written about Atlantis suggests a basic historical reality. However, distorted by time and confused reportage, it also suggests, as has been said, a close connection with Shambhala and the fact the legend of Atlantis has converged with that of Shambhala in outer region of number in a number of different contexts. Atlantis, Shambhala, all connected. Well, we know that. We know to connect all this with the Preston. Like Shambhala, the mythical kingdom of Preston John, was a full country of marvels, right? He's a marvel now. He's a marvel character now. They made a marvel out of us. So I said they're going to make marvels out of you, astonishments out of you. It was said to lie in the Gobi Desert and to possess a fountain of eternal youth from which all the inhabitants can drink, thus banishing sickness and old age. Only the purest souls, pure water, could live in Preston John's land where crime and poverty and injustice were unknown. A magic mirror enabled the king to observe everything that happened in the world. Flying dragons carried men for long distances through the air and a magic ring could make them invisible. We talked about these stones. A huge tower rose in the middle of the city and there a wonderful magical stone was guarded day and night. And now you got these keepers of these stones Kings and queens guarding these stones, my naga. <laughs> We're talking Shambhala. Who was Preston Child? <laughs> who or oh, who was Preston Child? They all want to know, man. Yeah, you know. <laughs> I'm going to leave the links in case you're just surfing away. They all been asking about it through concept, Constantinople. The Christian and the Muslims are looking for the king of kings, the copper ones, the Khyber ones. They say he's nothing but a legend. Preston John's tale was a ripoff of Alexander the Great. Are oh, we just talking <laughs> the Kofi campaign? Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. We're talking jock time. Yeah, so these are their theories. Either this was the same thing as Alexander the Great or the Tibetan Dalai Lama, the mythical kingdom of Shambhala, Shan Sangri La, or he wasn't a Christian at all, but in fact a Tibetan or an Indian or possible Mongol, Wang Kong, President John. Maybe he was a king of Ethiopia, an historian. <laughs> President John was a patriarch John of India. Maybe he's Johnny the Baptist. Who is Preston John? Everybody want to know. Everybody want to know about this mysterious ruler, Preston John. Why are we in Preston John 92? Preston Juan, Priest John. Why are we looking, man? Preston John's kingdom. <laughs> What are we looking for? Mysterious country in Asia marked the kingdom of Preston John. Stretches from Turkestan to Tibet, to the Himalayas, to the Gobi Desert, man. He's the king of all the Indians. We're going to get all these links next time. I'm just We're going right into Shambhala. Flying dragons carried men swiftly through the air for long distances. Flying. Dragons, this phantom emperor full of marvels, Shambhala, Sibola, Preston John's realm in Shambhala. It's exactly where we're going to pick it up next time. 
Then we're going to go hard into Adion for 93. Few legends have stirred the imaginations like Shambhala and the kingdom of Presta John. Tibetans believe Shambhala is a hidden kingdom where great spiritual masters ruled the idyllic realms. In medieval Europe, Presta John was the title of a priest king who reigned over the mysterious kingdom of the Indies. There were some, though, who came to believe Presta John was really the emperor of Ethiopia. Was there any historical reality to these stories? Originally, they were not considered fables at all, and many historians have offered theories explaining these mysterious mystical kingdoms. Another theory will be offered here, which suggests that Shambhala, Sibola, Shambhala, and the kingdom of Preston John were one and the same. Furthermore, they can be identified with the contemporary historical realms known as Sant. Fatsi to the Chinese and Savarnath Vipa to the Indians and Zabab to Muslim writers. Everyone's asking about Preston John. And this is Preston John, <laughs> installment number 92. Keep doing it for Joy World. Maurice Rutley, what it do? David Abreu, what it do? Sonia Baker. What it do, man? Shalom to the cons. Let's reach 20,000 for Joy World all the way up. Continue to build our wall of protection. Blue, purple, red, white, lenny, a gold thread. We're doing this for the con. We're doing this for the creator. We're doing this for the tribes because we see clearly that we are already home, my nugget. And we're going to keep striving, man. Hey, y'all helping our channel really pop off, man. And when you see advertisements on our clips, <laughs> so far we raised a whopping 118 for Joy World. So we're doing the advertisements. I know they're annoying on the clips, but every time you skip them, just say for Joy World, for Joy World. We're, you know, boosting up. We got a lot of new wave surfers. 500 a month is coming in now, man. Over 92,000 views in the last 28 days because of you, man. So my nagas, you are keeping it pushing for Joy World. You keeping it pushing for the tribe, man. The water to the cons for everything y'all doing. And keep surfing the wave, man. You got the full investigation of Preston John popping off in your headphone from one all the way through. <laughs> Where we at? 92, man. Look out for Preston 93. And keep surfing the wave with us, man. Because we surfing the wave with you. And the drop don't stop, man. Drive Library, the OG one. <laughs> Click the link below. I'll leave it for you, man. Keep surfing away with us. And just know that we've been doing this for a long time. And it's because of your support, Drive Nation. A hop to our supporters, our dragons on the wall, surfing away, man. And this is for you. So we still got so many of these books to dig on. And we coming in hot. We dropping in hot. And the drop, drop, chatter, chat, chat, chat. And the drop library. Hey, the water cons, we did it again, man. And the drop, don't stop. Stay up, suit up, choose up.